Hey everyone, I'm back. I know I should have said I was going to probably do this in two parts, but I didn't. Um, but in the previous video that I did, I talked about in more detail what TNA did and how and what they did right to really get people watching. Now, WWE, um, you know, you got to give WWE credit. Yeah, to a lot of people, it's the same old, sh you know, thing. But, you know, WWE knows what they're doing. Believe me, they know what they're doing. Why do I say that? Well, let's take a look at this. As I mentioned in the, in the first video, TNA knew what they were doing by having Hogan come out. I think, obviously, thanks to Bischoff's influence. But having B Hogan come out five minutes before Raw went on the air. Now, WWE also did the smart thing, too. Now, usually with a guest host, that guest host doesn't really, you know, appear at the first segment. There have been a few occasions, a few exceptions, like with wrestlers like DBRC and Roddy Roddy Piper, but not much. Not much. He didn't really, you know, have any much interaction. You know, DBRC, when he was on there, he was only there to push his son and, and try to do the right thing for his, you know, for his kid. Um... Roddy Piper didn't even come to the ring until the middle of the show. And that was it. So the question is, what did WWE do that was right on Raw this past Monday? Well, apparently they started out with Bret Hart. They had him come to the ring. They had him basically, I think, partially shoot, if you will, and let him just be himself. You know, they had a great interaction with Shawn Michaels. You know, they did everything great. They did everything fine. And then, yes, they did everything fine. So, so apparently, um, you know, they did everything right, right there. And it kind of made fans kind of confused because, you know, they wanted to see the interaction between what Hogan had to say and, you know, the situation there. But they also wanted to see Brett and Sean interact for the first time in 12 years. So, and that's what happened. And, you know, and that's what happened. And, you know, fans wanted to see that. And that was very strategically well done by WWE because they knew exactly how to get fans to switch over. They knew if they just started with a match or said, okay, this guy's on here, and then they start, like I said, start with a match, they're not going to get anybody switching over. People are going to switch back to TNA and watch Hogan and, and the NWO. But WWE didn't do that. They had Bret Hart come out and give him the time he needed along with Shawn. You know, they did some great things. Now, again, some of the matches were some of the same old matches, no doubt about it. But WWE, I believe, it may not look like it to a lot of fans, but it looks like WWE is slowly planting some seeds with, of change of their own. And slowly planting the seeds of that change that will accumulate, a, if you will, or accumulate, accumulate, if you will, or come together, I should say, at WrestleMania. Why do I say that? Well, let's just take a look at this. Um, Jericho, gone from Raw, supposedly, but he's trying to still get back on. Um, Shawn Michaels and Triple H are still the tag team champions. Now, rumors are going around that they'll be the last two in the Royal Rumble match. Now, if that occurs, the seeds will be slowly planted for the matches. Now, I'll get into that in just a bit. Now, the other thing that they did is they also continued to build Sheamus up as a monster heel, as a monster heel champion. Champion, even though he'll be defending against John Cena at Mania. Not Mania, but at the Rumble. And then, of course, at the end of the show, they planted the seeds for the Vince McMahon, Bret Hart, fight, street fight apparently, at Wrestlemania. So the question is, were those, which were the high points? Well, the high points were obviously the interaction that Brett had with Michael and Vince. Those were the high points. Those were what fans wanted to see. Now, despite what some wrestling fans may say, it is intriguing on how WWE keeps trying to push Jericho oh, in the storyline to where he wants to be on Raw. I believe eventually what WWE is going to do with Jericho, whether it's on Raw or SmackDown, is they're going to have him basically come out and say, look, 
The reason I want to be on Raw as well as on SmackDown is because I don't need a title or a unified title to do to do that. I should just be given that opportunity because I'm the best at what I do. That's what I think they want to do with, with, with Jericho. They want him to say something like that, basically saying, hey, I'm better than everybody else. I should be on both shows despite being unified champion or not. That's what I see happening. Now, they did all, they did everything, planting all the seeds and everything. They did a good job on that. Um, now, again, as far as um, Royal Rumble goes, in the weeks to come, you'll be seeing some seeds planted, planted with DX, you know, possibly disbanding or just having some dissension, especially after the Rumble occurs, because rumors going around is DX will be the last two in there. Now, if that happens, this is the scenario WWE will be working on. Uh, if Shawn Michaels wins, then he'll obviously challenge. Then what WWE would do if they, if Shawn Michaels wins, then what WWE will do is they'll have Shawn Michaels challenge the Undertaker because they'll have the Undertaker retain the world title. They'll change the, they'll change up the plans. That'll be this will all be part of that change they'll be going through. Then instead of having Batista win the title at Rumble, they'll have Undertaker win it. Uh, retain and possibly have him lose finally at WrestleMania to Michael. That would be the only uh, logical sense for Michael to win the Rumble. Now, if Triple H wins, it will be uh, and it would be so ironic to be winning in the same same sti uh, same place that he won the 2002 one. If Triple H wins, then he'll ch then Sheamus will keep the title, and of course they'll build up Sheamus and Triple H. Now, why would they do this? Why would they plant the seeds with this kind of change in the next couple of weeks? Well, it's because of this. They want to make, I believe, because of what's going on with TNA now, the situation I think they know is being very, is very serious. What they want to do with T, what they want to do, is they want to make the WrestleMania in Glendale, Arizona, a very personal, very realistic WrestleMania. In other words, if Triple H wins the Rumble and challenges Sheamus, because apparently they'll keep the title on Sheamus, they'll reveal the background between these two. Like, oh, the reason, you know, Sheamus, they'll apparently have Sheamus just come out and say, hey, the reason I'm on top is because of this guy, and now I'm going to finally prove that I don't need him anymore. That, that's what I look at. I mean, the three main events, if not four main events, this is the way it looks like. If Triple H wins, Sheamus retains, Sheamus, Triple H, Undertaker, Michaels, McMahon, Hart. The same thing around if it's Michaels wins. It'll be Michaels, Undertaker, Sheamus, Triple H. I don't know how they do it without any championship. Well, they'll find a way to get Triple H a title match anyway. And McMahon Hart. Now, I said there were four. Apparently, WWE is still determined to get Cena and Rock. I don't know how that will even occur. But apparently, that's what they want. So, WWE is going to do... Believe me. After this past Monday, after seeing themselves get... I don't know, as some people say, destroyed in certain ways at certain times during Monday Night Raw, during the Monday Night War. WWE will do whatever it takes to get this whole, these four matches to occur. They'll do that. And they know that if they get Cena and Rock to become a reality, people will basically blow TNA, they will blow TNA out of the water. That's what I see. And the seed of change for WWE to go from the PG rating to the TV-14 rating, despite how people feel about it, will occur at WrestleMania. I feel that. Now you might think, now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Brian, you get this all from, the, from you know, just this past Monday night's TNA WWE deal? Well, it's just one fan's opinion, but I truly believe that's what WWE is going to plan to do. And that's all I have to say in... I guess my more detailed look at what WWE did this past Monday and how they plan to use that in the future. And I'll talk to you all later. Peace.